Today on our wonderful day in the Lord broadcast, we're looking at the dialogue between Job and Eliphaz. And uh, Eliphaz has now spoken. He's given his worldview based upon a mystical experience and, in, and his own personal investigation. And he's concluded that Job is going through all these hard times uh, because he deserves it. Uh, he's apparently been bad <clears throat> and evil. He's hid it somehow <clears throat> so that nobody knows about it, but, uh, but it has to be there. Otherwise, he would not struggle. And that's Eliphaz's uh, philosophy of life. In chapter 6, Job pushes back. Uh, Job believed that, that, in fact, he has not done anything to deserve this. <clears throat> As a result of that, he is going to, to say a number of things that uh, begin to show that perhaps Job does have some issues. Uh, no, he has not done the things Eliphaz accuses him of, or later on the other friends either. He's lived a life of integrity in many ways. He's been a, great, a gracious and a good man uh, in so many ways, even a very spiritual man. But there are uh, issues with Job, and they begin to come out at this particular point as he pushes back on Eliphaz. Uh, first of all, he begins to say, and he says this several times in the book, that God, that God has become one who targets him. He is the target for God's arrows. He says in verse 2, he says, Oh, that my vexation were actually weighed and laid in the balances together with my destruction. For then it would be heavier than the sands of the sea. Therefore, my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. Their poison, my, they, they're poison my spirit's drinks and the horrors of God are ranged against me. Uh, to believe that you are God's target is an awful, ugly, and painful thing to consider. He'll say the same thing in chapter 7, verse 20. He'll say it again in chapter 16, verse 12. So this was no offhand comment. He believes he is God's target. Now, it's true that God will bring into our lives trials and difficulties at times for his purposes, always for our good, even though at times it doesn't feel that way. Uh, so that is true. But, but, to, but when you get the idea that God has made us his target, that's a different thing. Because to be a target is meaning that God wants to harm us. It's the, it's the bow and arrow you know, thing. The archer takes the, the bow, pulls back the, the bow, and the, shoots the arrow into a target. And we have become that target for God. God is practicing on us. God is doing us harm. That's how Job sees it. And he's beginning to accuse God, not of evil, he never curses God, but he does question why God would do this to him. He feels that he is in God's sights. And so that's the first thing we see, and that's not good. Job is struggling deeply, as we can imagine. In verses 8 and 9, he also once again asks for the Lord to take his life. Earlier, he wished he'd never been born. Now he wants God to take his life. Verse 8 Oh, that my request might come to pass, and that God would grant my hope. Would that God were willing to crush me, that he would release his hand and cut me off. I, I want to die. I, I just I, He's not going to take his own life, so we're happy to hear that. But he is wanting God himself to come and, and crush him, take his life. You get this over with. That's his prayer. That's his cry to God. And then he mo goes on in the, in the rest of the chapter, most of the rest of the chapter, to just talk about how the, the advice of his friends is useless. They're not helping him. They're not, it's not wise wi wisdom at all and is not being helpful. And then he challenges them in verses 24 and 25 to prove that he's done anything wrong. Remember, Eliphaz's uh, worldview is Job has done wrong. Job says, I want you to prove, to prove that. So in verse 24, he says, Instruct me and I will be silent and cause me to understand how I have erred, and how painful are upright words, but what does your reproof prove? Basically, he said, show me. If I truly have sinned so badly that God has made me his target, then show me where I have gone wrong. Now, we're going to hear later on some of his friends trump up some ideas about what they think Job have done. They're all wrong. Uh, some of the things they're going to accuse Job of are absolutely not true. But there are assumptions on the part of the friends who all believe Job is getting what he deserves. And so they're going to make up stuff. And if you've ever been accused falsely, 
of things you have not done or even thought about doing, you know how painful that is. So that adds to Job's sorrow as well. And so he wants his friends to show him where they're wrong, but where he's wrong. Uh, they're going to show him something, but it's not going to be truthful stuff. We're going on to chapter 7 tomorrow to follow up more on Job's dialogue.